much. Can I? I'm good to go? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Salaamu Alaikum. So, if my, uh, mashallah, my, there's no announcement, I guess. Uh, the only announcement is my wife is in Dubai. <laughs> I mean, still in Dubai. But she's in Zoom call. She wanted to hear what I'm saying. Okay. Okay, it works. Next week, inshallah. So every update in the in the Friday prayer. <laughs> um, so having said that, uh, what I wanted to talk about today is uh, success. Uh, still, is it okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I want to talk about. Um, Success. Before I talk about success, I want to read a few verses uh, from uh, from Quran. What is it talks about the traits of the righteous? Traits of the righteous, chapter 25, 63 to 63, 63 to 63. The worshippers of the most gracious are those who tread the earth gently, and when the ignorant speak to them, they only utter peace. In the privacy of the night, they meditate on their Lord and, pro- and fall prostrate. And they say, our Lord spare us the agony of hell, its retribution is horrendous. It is the worst abode, the worst destiny. When they give, they are neither extravagant nor stingy, they give in moderation. They never implore beside God any other God, nor do they kill anyone, for God has made life sacred, except in the course of justice. Nor do they commit adultery, those who commit these offenses will have to pay. And then I wanted to also read um, Luqman's advice. 31, 16. Oh, my son, know that even something as tiny as a mustard seed, deep inside a rock, be it in the heavens or the earth, God will bring it. God is sublime, cognizant. Oh, my son, you shall observe the conduct of Salat, you shall advocate righteousness and forbid evil, and remain steadfast in the face of adversity. These are the most honorable traits. And then, um, uh, traits of the believers, which is in 42, 37. I'm going to read a few verses from there. They avoid gross sins and vice, and when they anger, they forgive. They respond to their Lord by observing the conduct of the Lord. Their affairs are decided after due consultation among themselves, and from our provisions to them, they give to charity. When gross injustice befalls them, they stand up for their rights. And then uh, 1738, God says, all bad behavior is condemned by, by your Lord. And honesty, it talks about, and, and so many other things, uh, talks about the importance of being appreciative. And all these verses are in the Quran in different, different places, right? And uh, I was trying to, you know, uh, we all read Quran, we all try to understand Quran, we all discuss about Quran. And what I have, um, I go and read some uh, good books and I see this Quranic principles uh, has been totally applied in, in, in these books. I try to put together uh, in a step by step and I wanted to make sure um, I'm addressing it in the in right way. And then I also wanted you to make sure you take notes or anything if you want to. It's free. Um, I'm going to <laughs> I'm going to go all the way to here, and then I'm going to talk about these things. Inshallah. No, uh, it's not talking us here. Yep. So here we start, right? Success. I'm going to talk about success because success is what something which we all wanted to have. Um, success goes like this, right? In, in, in this world, uh, assuming there's a disbelief, this is a decision box, this is the easy I can go. Because when you work in a corporate office, you go so many circles, so many things. Right? People who work in corporate office know that. But I try to put it very simple here. And then here is a disbeliever, right? Either he goes straight into a failure or he goes into a success, right? He achieves uh, success in his life. And then when it's good to hereafter, he becomes back to his failure, right? But when for a believer, for a believer, it's, there is no other choice. There is no, nothing else for him. He always have a success in his life. And then in the hereafter, he goes after this, the, the success follows the, from this life to the hereafter. The chapter 23, which is believer, 
chapter 23 verse 1 talks about successful indeed are the believers which is like totally there you cannot go wrong if you are a believer you have to be a success always and then if you see the from the previous um, slide to this slide i have put a small mark there which means what i'm trying to say is that the at symbol right it is all the habits of successful people or the prim there are some principles which the successful people uh, follow which makes them success right if they if, if anyone in the world if, you, if they follow those things um, they will they will go they will attain success and then for the believer there are certain principles if they follow they will attain success so let's see what are those uh, principles in chapter 2 verse 2 God talks about this scripture is infallible, a beacon for the righteous. A beacon in the sense is it's like a it's like a fire or a light which is set up in the high or prominent position as a warning signal or or for celebration. It is like bringing you towards that, right? It's it lights up and then you see that and then you walk towards that. And I wanted to tell you a story. This is behind this lighthouse, right? There was a there was a ship which is coming, which is in the dark, right? And then they see this light, and then they are talking about this. Hey, the ship is saying that um, alter your course. The ship is thinking there's another ship is there, right? So alter your course 10 degrees, and then the lighthouse says alter your 10 degrees north, right? The, the ship is saying change your course, and then the lighthouse is saying change your course. And then the captain of that ship is saying, you have to change your course, I am the captain of the battleship. And then this guy is saying, you have to change, I am the lighthouse. So you, what, what exactly happening is that you, we cannot do anything other than following the Quranic principles. Quranic principles are, are laid in the rock and then we have to bend our back to make sure that we are following it right or not. Otherwise it is a disaster, right? And then that's the joke on that. The Quranic habits, Quranic habits for uh, for being successful, right? What are the Quranic habits? Quran is not like other book. Quran is the only book for our redemption, the only book for our salvation, the only self-help book uh, or a motivational book. I'll come to the motivational books uh, some after some time. All the meaning for our life, all the meaning of our life, the the principles or everything is laid down in one book and there is no you know prequel to that or sequel to that there is only one book and it is applicable to the whole mankind right and then the rules are can be applied to any race any language any community um, to the kids so we have like you know honor your parents for the wife respect your husband not there okay and how to deal with your neighbors and you know many many and uh, one thing I love about the Quran is, is, is main reason I love Quran is it's free. I'm so cheap. <laughs> what I'm doing to share is the Quranic principle, which is uh, which the most successful people are, are currently practicing, right? They pay for that. They pay enormous money to attend the seminars and, and everything. But Quran gives us the roadmap. And even if we, if we don't have, we don't have to understand anything. We just have to follow the roadmap, what is laid down in the Quran, and then Quran, by following those roadmaps, those, those habits, and, and then we, we slowly move, we don't see, um, we don't see how we improve, but we, 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 we definitely improve in our life. So that is what is, is uh, uh, will happen if we follow the Quranic principles in our life, inshallah. And uh, the Quranic principles are, are very, very basic. It's, it's, it goes beyond, uh, uh, you know, even before our, uh, our creation. For example, um, God says about uh, monotheism, right? 30, 30. So God says, therefore you shall, monotheism, natural instinct, 30, 30. Therefore you shall devote yourself to the religion of strict monotheism, such is the natural instinct placed into the people by God. Such creation of God will never change. This is the perfect religion, but most people do not know. And uh, I wanted to talk. The first and foremost people discuss 
um, is the purpose, right? We all have to have a purpose. Quran talks about this purpose. In chapter 16, verse 3, he created the heavens and the earth for a specific purpose. He is much too high, far above any idols they set up. 38 says, why do they not reflect on themselves? God did not create the heavens and the earth and everything between them except for a specific purpose and for a specific lifespan. However, most people with regard to meeting the Lord are disbelievers. 44, 38, we did not create the heavens and earth and everything between them just to play. 44, 39, we created them for a specific purpose, but most of them do not know. So the purpose is very important for us. We have to have our purpose in life. Uh, the, the purpose is the one which pulls us uh, to the future. If you don't have a purpose, then we'll be wandering around. We don't know where we are going, right? Even if you want to go to LA, we should have a map, right? So purpose, if you don't have a purpose, it will, uh, we will live in the past. The past will pull us in the back, and then all the distractions will pull us into sideways. Purpose is the one which is important, which will make us, push us uh, forward. And if you don't have a purpose, one bad day or one bad week, month, or one bad year will, will bury us down. It will not let us come out of our, uh, our failures. So purpose is very, very important for us to live a uh, uh, you know, successful life. The purpose should be something very strong. It should be, uh, it should, we should, our mind should, we should put our mind to the purpose. We should put our heart to the purpose. Our soul should work for that purpose. The purpose is, has to be such a, such a huge thing in our life. And, and, uh, and then people, most of the people talk about goals, right? Purpose is more before the goal. For, uh, some people are confused with purpose and goal. Purpose is something, I, I want to serve my, my country, right? That should, could be a purpose. The goal is that you can be, become a doctor, you can become a soldier, something like that, right? The purpose is for, for me to be happy. The goal, should, goal is do not get married. So it has to, <laughs> it has to be like that. So the goal, so the, the, what is the purpose, right? The purpose of our life is worship God alone, right? That's the, that's the whole total purpose. And then why we do is we have to redeem our soul. Worship God alone and redeem our soul. This is the, the very important purpose. And then after that, then comes the goals. We set the goals how we want to achieve this purpose. Goals are for a year, for five years, for, for a month, for a week. It can be, you know, it can be divided like that. But purpose is something all about, which is which, which makes us, uh, uh, which drives us to reach this. Whenever we do something, we have to see that is it is it solving this purpose or not. And then, goal. I'll, I'm going to the goal. The next goal is uh, something which which uh, which has to which has to try to achieve our purpose. Otherwise, there is no use of having a goal. I want to go to LA and then. I drive to a San Francisco, it's not going to happen. So if I want to go to LA, I have to you know, go to i fi or whatever it is. So what is, what is a goal and what is purpose I, ex I explained, right? The, the live example is goal, what I'm saying is goal, is goal should be specific is because I had a goal to go to India. Um, my wife had a goal to go to India, right? Her goal was very specific. She wanted to go to India, she wanted to, oh, wow. I have to go fast. She, she had a goal. She had to go to India. She had to go to shopping. She had to go to this shop. She had to go to this dress. She's in India now. And bonus, she's in Dubai now, the world capital of the, of the shopping. And I, I had a very general goal. I want to go to India. I'm still here. I don't know when I'm going to go. So you have to understand goals should be very specific, right? Like our goal, attaining perfect happiness, attaining certainty, uh, becoming a rich believer, we are, want to be a reverent person, and, and all these things are, 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 should be our goals. And uh, we have to set our goals. Um, uh, every year what I do is on the Night of Destiny, I just write it out, my goals, and then um, every next Night of Destiny, uh, I used to see most of my mashallah goals are or taken care by God's grace. Some of are not, so I rewrite it for the for the next year, and then I work like that. 
the goals has to be specific write it down because every single time in in our mind every day i don't know how much 60000 70000 thoughts go in but if you write down that those thoughts which is your main thought if you write down then you're telling your brain that this is the important one i have to work on that so people successful people they they have this goal setting and then they they work on that goal right um and then it's already 1:30 within like few minutes or so so and chronic examples of specific goals right this is a this is a general goal right we all daily do this guide us in the right path it's very very general guide us in the right path then god goes next the path of those whom you blessed not of those who have deserved wrath not of the strayers this is how our, our goal instead of asking general we have to ask very specific and then this is the one other one like god says ask protect us from sinning until it becomes too late for us to repent very specific and then this one 3370 god could have said god utter only that correct i i always like this one o you believe reverence god and utter only the correct utterances it is very very specific and then this one is 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 super um, um, i love this verse because unless your purpose is clear the worship god alone redeem my soul i'm going to go to paradise only then you will ask like this a home in paradise she's already um, she she's already certain about where she's going to go and she is uh, she is already doing that airbnb in paradise <laughs> a home is going to build um, imagine taking the kids to to florida i mean not moving there i mean vacation <laughs> so we bit we see the hotels right we see the hotels we see how it looks we see how how big the bed and how is the restroom and um, is there a wife i mean is there a wifi <laughs> so all this thing we see there right like that we have to imagine that in paradise what we are going to do we want a home we want a mansion i believe 66 one could be the uh, home number for her <laughs> so you only when you are certain about your purpose when you are certain about your goal when you are working on that you will def- you you are going to ask a prayer like this build a home for me uh, in paradise so inshallah um, tubu to let's repent tubu lalla alhamdulillah ashhadu alla ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu the successful people are next one i wanted to talk about is that they write down their contracts they are very very specific and what they wanted to do they write down their contracts god says in 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 the quran chapter 2 verse 282 um is write down your 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 transactions right we write down all our transactions believers write down and still um the the, the specific of uh, how important this is the 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 whole in the whole quran 6000 and odd verses are there and this is the only longest verse and uh, if the if the this verse is very important and especially this verse is important when one man is not there because two women is getting involved here so that is more important and then um <laughs> now you understand okay <laughs> write down your uh, your goals i already said that right it it matches the right? the habit of writing uh, and everything gives us a a uh, good habit of you know writing down everything writing down our goals writing a journal anyone wants who anyone has a habit of writing journal i started it and it's blank <laughs> i inshallah i'm good planning anyone wants to write start to write i'll i'll sponsor a journal for them so what 60 text are coming <laughs> okay inshallah i'll 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 buy a journal for you if somebody wants to start this uh, this habit of writing and then reading right the habit of reading the first verse in the quran starts with uh, read where is ikra your name is your name is read <laughs> uh, read in the name of your lord who created i was learning stand just for a moment read in the name of your lord who created read and your lord most exalted or a little more and read the quran from cover to cover right we god is putting us in the habit of um, uh, of reading right the first verse in the in the quran is reading and there was a survey conducted by by people um those who fly in the business class and those who fly in the economy right and then the people in the business class what they do they are they read books the people in the economy they watch movies 
So that's a big difference. They, they, they make sure they read book, they, they, they listen to it. The good thing about reading book is that you don't have to, you don't have anyone to you know, talk over. You have to listen, you have to absorb, you have to you know, um, uh, keep this thing coming into that. So there was, a, there was, a, uh, there was one lady who, who went to a doctor, right? And then she said that I'm, I'm having a habit of reading text messages. And then uh, the doctor said, oh, it's, it's okay, what is wrong in that? And then after saying that, and, and the, the lady said, no, everybody said, um, are you mad? They are telling me, when I read the text message, they're saying, are you mad? And then the doctor said, don't worry about it. And then the doctor turned to get something else. And the woman picked up the phone and she started to read doctor's messages. And the doctor said, are you mad? <laughs> so, <laughs> so she is having that. It's, 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 uh, it's people's habit of, you know, reading means not just reading a good books, not, not trying to read this. <laughs> when it comes to motivational books, right, I was, <laughs> What happened? You want to see again? <laughs> so when it comes to motivational books, reading means you know motivational books, self-help books, all these things are there, right? They are very expensive. And then people get um, motivated to steal them because that's so, so much expensive. Uh, when I picked up some, because of this sermon, I picked up some, some of the books uh, from the library. Uh, you know, seven, uh, seven Habits, uh, How to Be Success, all these things, and I was picking up the books, and then the librarian saw it, she, she, she thought I'm, I'm a lost case. <laughs> so I was like, uh, there are more books there, you want to take it? <laughs> um, and then uh, people picked up some, you know, have six important uh, decisions you'll make. There are a lot of different, uh, uh, what you call, the name of the books, right? Seven, uh, seven Habits. Um, there are some name of the books. Eat That Frog. Eat That Frog is, is the name of a motivational book. It, it, it sold a lot. And then Drink This Water. Maybe, I, this is just, I'm putting the name. Drink This Water, Eat That Frog. Um, the book Secret. It, got, it sold so many copies it's, and still secret, right? It's still secret. They call it a secret. <laughs> I don't know why they call it a secret. And uh, there are things which these people quote, right? Look at this quote. If you think you can do a thing, or think you can't do a thing, you are right. Now you tell me what is right. <laughs> you want me to do or you don't want me to do? <laughs> right? And then this guy wrote like seven habits of highly effective people in 1989. It got sold and everything. And then after like 2004, he comes and says eighth habit. Then he could have done that in the seven habits, right? He added after so many years, eighth habit. And uh, this motiv that's what I was saying. Quran is one motivational book which has everything in it. There is no sequel, prequel on that. And then this is what happens. They go to any seminar and they say, you have a tiger in me and I'm just sleeping on that. <laughs> and then they are like, they are like so expensive, right? And then some rules are not applicable. He gives a story about US, and then somebody reads in India, they won't even understand, right? In homeless shelter, and there is no nothing in India is homeless shelter. Everybody's on the street. <laughs> and then uh, they talk about the the successful people are always uh, having a healthy life, right? They uh, and Quran talks us, uh, Quran teaches us that eat and drink moderately. We, we, we have to eat and drink moderately. And whatever excess fat we, 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 we collected on Ramadan month, we just drain it away. <laughs> and then meditation. This is, uh, this is very important and mashallah. Uh, they, they focus on themselves. People, the successful people, they focus on, on, on their health. They focus on, on meditating. They focus on their, um, uh, their goals and everything. They're, by that they do it. But God advises us to do Meditation. For example, 1779, during the night you shall meditate for extra credit that your Lord may raise you to an honorable rank. If it were not that he resorted to meditation on God, the meditation at night is more effective and more righteous. In the privacy of the night, they meditate on their Lord and fall prostrate. During the night you shall meditate on his name and after prostrating. Mashallah, all these things talks about meditation. Meditation is very effective, and most of the successful people have their this as a, their their habit. Um, and then um, keeping the the, the time. Um, what happens is they, they, they 
we cultivate this habit by doing our contact prayers on time, contact prayers on specific times, and then we make sure that we attend the Juma prayer on the, on the specific time, so we plan it, everything. These are the habits which the successful people also have, but Quran asks us to, um, you know, do it as part of our religious duties. And then um, in India, we all know, uh, a chief guest was called at 6.30, and then he went at 6.30, and no one was there, and then only the guy who was doing the decoration was there. And then he joined the guy doing the decoration. <laughs> and then at 7.30, the, the, the function started. So yeah, IST, when, when somebody says, anyone invite, any Indians invite you for a, for a dinner, don't go on the time. Go one hour later. <laughs> remind each other. And we know this one, right? We have to remind each other. And remind for the reminder benefits the believers. Therefore, you shall remind. Perhaps the reminder will benefit. Successful people always remind each other. Even though, they, even though the other person doesn't remind, they remind them. So I, I got a story for you. <laughs> Before that. <laughs> so there are four people went for a dinner, and then husband and wife, and then the newly, the, the, the guy and his fiance, right? They, they went for a dinner, and then the husband and wife came back home. The wife was telling the husband, uh, look, this girl, the, your friend who's getting married um, another two months, the, his fiancee is very egoistic, and then um, she's not even pretty. <laughs> and, and then uh, her parents is, is having a criminal background, so why don't you remind him to not to get uh, married? And the husband said, oh, no, I'm not going to tell, I'm not going to tell this to him. Do you, do you think because he'll get offended? No, because he didn't told me before. <laughs> So why should I remind him? <laughs> so, 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 but as a, as, a, as a believer, we have to remind each other, and then it's, it's best for us. And then the communication, right? Without this, the sermon will not get in. <laughs> treat each other amicably. Tell my servants to treat each other in the best possible manner, for the devil will always try, drive a wedge among them. Surely the devil is man's most ardent enemy. And how to spread God's message. So why I'm saying this is that they, the people, the successful people, they, they communicate in a very better way. They, they, their communication, because they have to talk to people who are either successful people or they have to talk to people who will, um, or they, they have to motivate, they have to bring you know, uh, people into, into the right shape, companies into right shape. So they have to talk, in a, you know, their communication has to be really good. And God uh, tells us, in 16.125, you shall invite to the path of your Lord with wisdom and kind enlightenment and debate with them in the best possible manner. Your Lord knows best who are strayed from his path and, he's a, he, and he knows best who are the guided ones. 25.63, the worshippers of the most gracious are those who tread the earth gently and when the ignorant speak to them, they only utter peace, right? And then uh, financial freedom. Financial freedom is also uh, very important. God says in 25.67, uh, when they give, they are neither extravagant nor stingy. They give in moderation. And then they will, they will be honest to people. They will not cheat anyone. Um, uh, all these things is a, is, a, is a habits of successful people. So financial freedom, what I understand is that if, uh, if my, mother, if my father, father is poor, God is running everything, right? I cannot do anything. But my father-in-law is poor, then I have ruined everything, right? So I have to choose my father-in-law. <laughs> And accepting mistakes. This is also very important, right? When we are, when we are, when we know that we are wrong, what is wrong in accepting? I think God says in 286, in the in the middle, our Lord, do not condemn us if you forget or make mistakes. And then 1873, uh, it talks about Moses. Moses was was a really a good prophet, a leader of uh, children of Israel, and he goes and he learns his, uh, knowledge from uh, from other person, God's servant. In 1873, he said. Uh, there was a discussion happened, right? And he said, I'm sorry, do not punish me for my forgetfulness. Do not be too harsh with me. Here Moses is asking, there was a three incident. We all know that any, any normal person is going to ask the same question, right? Why, do you, why did you do that? And then for that, he says, oh, okay, I'm sorry. So nothing wrong. For example, there are like three types of people. One person he's, is, is wise. When he is wrong, he will apologize to you. He's a wise man. And the righteous man, is someone who apologizes if he's not sure. If he's, <coughs> he's, he's not sure, right? He's not, I'm not sure, okay, I apologize. 
There is another third, third type of person who will apologize even though he is right. He is the husband. <laughs> and, the, and the arrogance. Arrogance is, arrogance is very, very important. We have to be very uh, careful. We have to be humble. We have to listen to people. We have to, we have to make sure what we, what we say is right. right. God says, you shall not treat the people with arrogance, nor shall you roam the earth proudly. God does, God does not like the arrogant show-offs. Walk humbly and lower your voice, the ugliest voice of the donkey's voice. Um, for this, uh, there, was, there, is a, there was a story of two CEOs. One CEO uh, was, was, the company was very low. The pe people called this guy, appointed a new CEO, and then asked him to address the company. And he came, and he didn't address the company about anything. He just addressed the company about the safety of the company. Like people were fearing, accidents were happening. He was addressing the company about the safety. Uh, you know, take care of the safety, workers are happy, and then production will go high, the company is taken care of. There was another guy, they appointed a CEO, he was a very arrogant guy. He goes to the company, he sees the people, the, the workers are very lazy and all these things. He thought that, okay, I'm going to fire one guy in front of all the people, and then this will make them teach a lesson. He went there, one guy was standing, doing nothing, looking at his phone, and then he called him. Didn't saw it speak anything, he just said, you are fired, and take three months severance pay. That's it. And after three months, he goes to back to the factory, and he's asking the HR guy, what happened? And then the HR says, you are they, they, the employees think you're stupid, an idiot. I thought, why they call me stupid? Because you fired a pizza guy. And the, why they call me? He came there to deliver a pizza, he was standing there to collect the money, you fired him. He was not even our employee. And then why they call me an idiot? Because you gave him three months severance pay. <laughs> and then all are calling us now, can I deliver pizza to your company? <laughs> so we have, to, we have to be humble. We have to uh, look at the situation. We have to, um, inshallah, uh, be a better successful believer. Uh, let's pray. Hakim Salah. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. La ilaha illallah. Ayat al Jumah. Allahu Akbar. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahir Rabbil Alamin. Ar Rahmanir Rahim. Malik al Madin. Iya kana budu, iya kana istahin. Ehdin israt al Mustaqim. Sirat al Ladina namta alaihim. Ghair al Maktubi alaihim al Taalim. Allahu Akbar. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Ar Rahman Rahim. Malik Yomiti. Iya can abudu, ya can estahim, Ehden is Rat al Mustahim, Sirat al Ladina and Amta Laifem, Idol Matu Vilayim al Dalin. Allah Wakbar Sami Allah Iman Hamida Allah Wakbar Allah Wakbar Allah Wakbar Allahu Akbar. Shadalai la ilaha illa Allah. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. God is always running everything.